Hi guys, in this video we will begin taking a look at the chemistry of acid derivatives. We have this outline here. I will also be referring to the other handout which has this cover page uh, and uh, sort of a flow diagram there. Um, see on the outline we will begin with the synthesis of carboxylic acids. Before we start reacting carboxylic acids, we first need to know how to prepare them. Now under this, we will see that we will begin by reviewing previous methods that we've seen. We've actually synthesized carboxylic acids before in this class. So a little review. But then we will have uh, a couple of new methods for preparing carboxylic acids. Now on the other handout, uh, we have the acid derivative interconversion sort of flow diagram here. I'll give a brief overview of it. Uh, the carboxylic acid is sort of the king, it's the main functional group. The other functional groups here are considered carboxylic acid derivatives because they are derived from the carboxylic acid. You should know the functional groups. Many of them were mentioned on uh, the drug sheet in a previous uh, video. There's a couple of others, for example, the acid chloride or acyl chloride and anhydride. We will look at these specifically at some point. They're not named here. I do give a note below about them. These two are actually reactive intermediates. That's why you will never see these uh, in any drug molecule. We also have esters, amides, and uh, nitriles, or we can call it a cyano group. Um, each arrow here indicates that we can convert one to another. The carboxylic acid can be converted to an anhydride, to an acid chloride, or to an ester, either one directly. And as we go along, you should put reagents for each reaction on the reaction arrow here. So how do you convert a carboxylic acid to an acid chloride? You can show the, react, the reagent here, or reagents. All right. Now the the derivatives shown in the box here are shown according to reactivity. Those that are higher up are more reactive than those that are lower down. So the acid chloride is the most reactive of the acid derivatives. And when we say reactive, we're talking about towards nucleophilic addition. All right. The carbonyl is typically always electrophile. An electrophile. After acid chlorides, we have anhydrides, and those two are so reactive that they will typically react with water, the note below. But then the esters are less reactive, they do not react with pure water, and then the amides are even less reactive than esters. Now the cyano or the nitriles, I sort of put at the same level. We're kind of not going to distinguish the reactivity of those two. Uh, this is a general overview. We'll talk about more specifics along the way. Now everything in the box or anything in the box can be converted back to the carboxylic acid by hydrolysis. We can hydrolyze anything in the box by a aqueous acid. That would be an acidic hydrolysis. Ultimately we're reacting with water but we have H plus catalyst. Or we can hydrolyze, that is, react with water under basic conditions. That ultimately forms the carboxylate anion first because if you're under basic conditions, you expect the product to be in the basic form, right? Should probably have some lone pairs here. Anytime we have a charged atom, we want to have a full and complete Lewis structure. All right, around that atom, okay. 
Um, I've noted that before. Uh, carboxylate, but with acid workup, we can proceed back up to the neutral protonated um, carboxylic acid. All right, so an overview there. But on this next page shows some of the methods we've seen before for preparing carboxylic acid. And this would be A on the outline, review. We've actually seen four different methods for preparing carboxylic acids. Number one here, benzylic oxidation. Take this compound here, react it with KMnO4, really any one of the big three oxidants, KMnO4 is most common, we can get the benzoic acid. But of course it is a carboxylic acid. So you know this reaction, we've just covered it with aromatic chemistry, two of the carbons get, get cleaved. Um, so that should be a review uh, reaction there. A second way that we've seen previously in making carboxylic acids is to oxidize a primary alcohol. Again, but one of the big three, right? And we also know that the intermediate here is the aldehyde. It's not isolated when you use the big three. And typically we also need water here. Uh, there's typically water included. And the ultimate outcome here is the carboxylic acid. That's actually one of the most common ways to prepare carboxylic acid is oxidation of a primary alcohol. Of course, all of these are kind of common, but the most common, I would say, is probably that reaction right there. Okay, we can also oxidize, of course, an aldehyde. We actually did that up here. It was, an, it was a non-isolated intermediate. That doesn't mean we couldn't start with an aldehyde. Of course, one of the big three would do that, just as it did there, but we also had a specialized reagent, the silver ion, uh, and we called that the Tollens reagent. We also called that the Tollens uh, test. And so you should remember that. Um, and typically, anytime you see the silver ion, it is always or only going to be used for oxidation of aldehydes because the silver ion will not oxidize an alcohol like the big three would. Now, uh, a practical issue here is getting the silver ion dissolved, and the ammonium hydroxide helps dissolve the silver ion. So that's why you usually see these kind of shown together. Uh, this is the traditional reaction conditions. Okay, a fourth way that we've seen before is oxidative cleavage of alkenes with KMnO4 under harsh conditions. We can actually cleave the carbon-carbon double bond. Each carbon becomes carbonyls. But if these are aldehydes, the aldehyde will get oxidized, of course, to the carboxylic acid. Because the big three oxidizes aldehyde to carboxylic acids. So the aldehydes here, again, would be intermediates that are, are not isolated, but then further oxidized. We could have a ring, of course. The lower carbon would become a carboxylic acid. The upper one would remain a ketone. Now, just as a, a review of this type of chemistry, you should also remember the ozonolysis, followed by a sort of magic or workup step. Um, this also cleaves the alkene, if you remember, but the aldehyde survives. So 
it does not get further oxidized. If you're using uh, zinc or dimethyl sulfide, which are both uh, going to be reducing agents, some books show a second step that's actually an oxidizing agent uh, after the ozonolysis. I did not ever show that, but if it is, then it could be that the aldehyde does not survive. Okay, basically that's a uh, kind of a brief summary of what we should already know. Um, now we can move to new methods for making carboxylic acids and B is reaction of a Grignard reagent with CO2. Now, if we take this alkyl halide reacted with a magnesium metal, we will of course expect to get the Grignard. We've seen that before. And we know that the Grignard here is essentially, it reacts as if it's this carbanion So nothing new there. But if we come in here with CO2, carbon dioxide, the Grignard will react with the carbon and do a nucleophilic addition. Okay, because you do have dipole here. Of course you have dipole the other way as well. We can move electrons onto either oxygen I move these onto oxygen, that will give that product. Where, let's put lone pairs here, yeah. Bonding pair moves onto oxygen, become the third lone pair. The other carbon double bond oxygen is there, and we just made that bond there. The propyl anion, carbon, bonded to carbon. Carbonyl is there, but the other becomes single bond to O minus. So hopefully you see that. And this is our carboxylate anion, right? The anion of a carboxylic acid is called a carboxylate. Now, some carboxylates have sort of common names, but the carboxylate is the uh, general name for the anion here. Now, if we just throw in some acid, strong acid, like uh, what's your favorite strong acid? Maybe HCl or sulfuric acid. Uh, we can protonate that acid base, and we can get a final neutral carboxylic acid. So sort of the, the R group here came from the Grignard and the sort of the carboxyl group came from the CO2. It's actually a very neat reaction. You make a Grignard and you just throw in dry ice. All right, dry ice is just solid carbon dioxide. You can pick some up at Publix or the grocery store. Um, you can, of course, use CO2 gas, but that's, that's less convenient because it's, it's much more difficult to handle and introduce a gas into your reaction. Uh, using dry ice is convenient there. Okay, so there's a new way to make a carboxylic acid. A second new way is to use cyanide as a carboxyl synthon. All right. The carboxyl group, the carbonyl OH. Synthon. Synthon is a word, you can look it up. Basically, the cyanide is going to, is a precursor to the carboxyl. And we use the cyanide in our synthesis 
and it, then it becomes the carboxyl. Let's see how that happens here. We start with an alkyl halide, actually the same as above. So both of these methods begin sort of with alkyl halides. But instead of making a Grignard down here, we do a simple SN2 with cyanide. And these electrons can come in here, kick off the leaving group, and that would give that there. I showed full structure. Okay, it's condensed here. There's your product. It's a standard organic one product. But now the cyano group, we can essentially convert it to the carboxyl group by hydrolysis. Now we've already said that in this video. We said over here, any of the functional groups in the box, including the cyano groups, nitriles, can be hydrolyzed back to the carboxylic acid by hydrolysis, either acidic, and that would be shown as H3O+, this is water and acid, or basic hydrolysis. This is water and base. And the strongest base you can have in water is hydroxide, so that's the base you would typically use. There no, there's no use trying to use a stronger base because once you put it in water, it just forms hydroxide. So when we say aqueous base, we typically are always referring to hydroxide. Now you could have weaker bases in water, but weaker bases, bases typically don't work. The strongest base you can have in water is hydroxide, and so that's what we would use. Sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, lithium hydroxide, etc. Um, and so that's what I show here. We can either hydrolyze with aqueous acid or with sort of basic uh, aqueous base. Now I really didn't show water here. Uh, to be complete, I should have said aqueous. But such little detail is often omitted. You just sort of have to know the details. So, we showed either one of those approaches on the, the diagram there can take us back to the carboxylic acid. Now, we will show this mechanism later when we look at the chemistry of uh, nitriles. All right, I'm not going to show the mechanism now. The nitrogen, the fate of the nitrogen is it becomes ammonium. Okay? It actually first becomes ammonia, most simply, but since we're under acidic conditions, the base is going to be protonated. Now here we were under basic conditions, but this requires a workup, and once you add in the acid, the ammonia will become protonated. So either method you use, the fate of the nitrogen is to become ammonium. Um, now, it could be here, a, a sort of a practical uh, additional point here is, when you're heating this with base, uh, a lot of times the ammonia will actually escape from, your, from like your condenser, because it is a gas. And maybe with pH paper you can uh, observe the ammonia uh, because it'll turn pH paper uh, blue because it's a base. Now if it escapes, whenever you add the acid in, well, you're not going to get ammonium because it's already escaped as ammonia. All right? So there are some practical considerations in here. Um, but in the end, we sort of need to know what's the fate of the nitrogen here because uh, it's clearly gone from our organic molecule. Okay, two new approaches. One of them has limitations. 
which I actually see, I tell you here, limitation of this approach. And I ask you, explain why the carboxylic acid below cannot be prepared from the halide using the cyanide, cyanide approach or the cyanide synthon approach. Explain why the Grignard method is better. Well, that sounds like a separate question. It is. First is explain why the compound below cannot be prepared from the halide. All right. A separate question is B. Then explain why the, the Grignard method is better for preparing benzoic acid from bromobenzene. Okay. Think about th those two questions. You know the structure of bromobenzene and benzoic acid. Because you've got to keep in mind, we're beginning with an alkyl halide in both, but here we have an SN2. All right. Now, it could be your argument becomes, well, I'm not going to do an SN2. But if you're doing an SN2, SN2 has certain requirements and limitations, right? You need to remember those limitations. That will help you understand the limitation of this approach. Okay. So there is synthesis of carboxylic acids. From there, we will look at converting carboxylic acids to other derivatives, reactions of carboxylic acids. And the first will be conversion to acid chlorides. And if you look back on sort of our diagram here, interconversion diagram, we see right here the carboxylic acid can be converted to the acid chloride. Um, we will pick up there in the next video. Because before we start doing reactions with carboxylic acids, I want to cover some of the general mechanism information in this other handout. Uh, we'll go over the nucleophilic acyl substitution mechanism. There's a lots of basic fundamentals here that we should already be aware of. We will, we will build upon uh, that foundation. You'll see lots of familiar chemistry, lots of familiar ideas here. Okay. Um, we'll also look at the reactivity of the acid derivatives. I've already kind of mentioned that. Okay, back over here when I said these are in order of reactivity. But we need to explain why. We need to explain the order. Rationalize the order there. Okay, why this order? Um, and then we'll talk about some general things about converting one to another. Okay, so some general information before we get into specifics from the outline. Also, this is a more recent addition to the handout, a general concept of protonation of the carbonyl. All right, very important idea here. Um, so important that I made a dedicated little uh, page about it. <clears throat> and the rest is a couple of miscellaneous applications. Uh, trip to the dentist, okay. Um, reactivity of anesthetics, okay. Why is one why does one last longer than another? Well, it has to do with the rate to which they're me uh, metabolized. And the rate of me metabolism is based on the, essentially the reactivity of the amide in this case. All right. Uh, a little bit more application. <clears throat> and I will 
note the back here, okay, this is fentanyl, all right, actually in Organic One at the very beginning we had a handout that focused on fentanyl, so we'll kind of come back to that, and we have a, have a synthesis problem here. Can you synthesize fentanyl from this starting material? All right. It's called 4-piperidinone. How would you convert 4-piperidinone to fentanyl? Now, this is something I want you to be working on over the next couple of weeks, a few weeks. It will also involve some test 4 uh, chemistry. All right. So, over the next three or four weeks, kind of keep this in mind, um, and you will need to use both test three and test four chemistry to do this. I also gave you a suggestion. You may want to use aniline at some point in your synthesis. Um, but, of course, you need to you don't want to back it up immediately to 4 piperidinone. You want to back it up to, okay, what reaction can I do to give fentanyl? It's not going to be a one step from here to here. All right? So it's ultimately, you know, it can be shown like this. And that doesn't mean it's three steps. This just means it's multiple steps back to piperidone. Um, so, be thinking about that over the next, you know, consistently, continually over the next couple of weeks. Um, okay, that will be the video here. Uh, and we'll pick up with that general information in this handout in the next video.